Amen and good morning and welcome to our service today. We are so glad that you're here and uh, thankful for the rain. Amen. And uh, we, we've needed rain and uh, we're thankful that God's given us a good week. Amen. And health and strength and the ability to be here today. We're glad for God's goodness. Let's uh, stand together if you're able to. We're going to sing 109. Savior like a shepherd lead us. <clears throat> Shepherd, lead us. Much we need thy tender care. In thy pleasant pastures, feed us. For our use, thy folds prepare. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast bought us, thine we are. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast bought us, thine we are. We are thine, do thou befriend us, be the guardian of our way. Keep thy flock from sin, defend us. Seek us when we go astray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear us, hear us when we pray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear, oh, hear us when we pray. On the fourth. Early let us seek thy favor, early let us do thy will. Blessed Lord and only Savior, with thy love our bosoms fill. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus. Thou hast loved us, love us still. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, Thou hast loved us, love us still. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, uh, for the blessed Savior. We thank you for his leading and God... Uh, I pray that uh, through the Holy Spirit of God that we would learn even through the preaching today that uh, we can uh, allow God even in a greater way to lead us and to strengthen us. And uh, so, Father, my prayer is if there's somebody here today that's maybe never made Jesus Christ Lord of their life, they've never, they've never trusted him in salvation, uh, God, I pray that uh, we might see somebody make that decision today. And for the saints, Lord, as we examine our hearts again and as the Holy Spirit of God does that work, we pray that the, any decisions that need to be made would be made today. We would not allow the devil to win. We would not allow the devil to, to, to repress uh, what we know we need to do. And so, Lord God, we ask that the Spirit would have preeminence, that the Spirit would have uh, again, the, the, the rule in our hearts as the word of God goes forth. So bless our time together here. We thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. And amen. You may be seated. Number 158. Broad 
the honors of thy name. Jesus, the name that charms our fears, that bids our sorrows cease. To spread the news of sinners' ears, tis life and health and peace. He breaks the power of cancelled sin, he sets a prisoner free. His blood can make the foulest clean. His blood availed for me. Hear him, ye deaf, his praise ye dumb, your loosened tongues employ. Ye blind, behold, your Savior come, and leave ye lame for joy. Amen. Let's stand together one more time. Number 32, or, or should say once again, we will stand again. But uh, number 32, he lives on high. <clears throat> Christ the Savior came from heaven's glory To redeem the lost from sin and shame On his brow he wore the thorn crown glory and he's on Calvary, he took my claim. He lives on high, he lives on high, triumphant over sin and all its shame. He lives on high, he lives on high, someday he's coming again. He arose from death and all its sorrow to dwell in that land of love. He is coming back some glad tomorrow and he'll take all his children home above. He lives on high, he lives on high, triumphant over sin and all its sin. On high, he lives on high. Someday he's coming again. Weary soul to Jesus come confessing. Redemption from sin is look to Jesus and receive a blessing. There is life, there is joy and victory. On high, he lives on high, triumphant over sin and all its stain. He lives on high, he lives on high, someday he's coming again. Amen. You may be seated, and boy, that's the start of that second verse there. Uh, it's a mouthful. Amen. <laughs> I don't know what he was thinking. When he wrote the music to it, let's see if we can see if we can put people into cardiac arrest. I'm not sure, but it's a good song, amen, and uh, we're glad that you're here with us this morning, and again, uh, just wanted to uh, ask for continued prayer for Connor and Rachel as they're away uh, for the weekend. They'll be back, I believe, tomorrow, but uh, as they travel, just pray that God would bless them. I uh, wanted to mention as well, again, the VBS will be starting um, on Thursday and um, just wanted to if you're going to be here working doing things try to get here uh, at least a half an hour early I do have some schedules out there I believe um, if not I'll make sure we get some out there if you need a schedule we can get that to you as well um, but I've also mentioned about cookies um, for for the children's uh, snacks um, or um, rice crispy squares or anything like that uh, sort of a thing that can be eaten real quick with the fingers or whatever without making a big goopy mess 
Um, but cookies, if, if you could bring some cookies in or uh, anything like Rice Krispie Squares, if you have a secret family recipe of some little nice snack that the kids would really enjoy, you can either bring that in tonight or Wednesday night. And uh, if you didn't bring it in this morning already, um, if you did, just put them in the fridge and uh, we'll have those for, when, uh, for, for Thursday. Um, and um, Wednesday night, we'll be going over uh, some of the final details uh, with everyone who's going to be involved so uh, just be reminded of that and we'll probably do the decorating putting everything up and getting all ready Wednesday night rather than having to come in um, Wednesday uh, Thursday during the day uh, as well so uh, we'll do that all Wednesday night so um, looking forward to it and uh, praying that uh, again we'll get some turnout we we're calling we haven't done this in three years and talking about forgetting the things that are in the past I think our last VBS we had 60 something kids and and uh right now it looks like we're gonna have six so you can't let past successes but we'll minister if there's six we'll minister to six amen and and uh, lord willing next year we can put a little more into it and um maybe get uh get some some of the once you've lost that that i guess that foundation a lot of them have moved away and a lot of them have grown out of it that we had coming and whatnot but uh, we'll get a new group and uh, work uh, our way back uh, Lord willing to a, a good number of young kids coming out um, so again do pray for the VBS uh, pray for decisions uh, good to see it'd be good to see some of these uh, children um, saved and then on, on Saturday uh, we're going to have a barbecue and we always invite the parents of course of the kids to come and they're going to hear the gospel uh, we'll have a gospel message and prizes and different things like that all on the Saturday and uh, so again be be in prayer for that and also uh, our anniversary services continue to pray for those and uh, we'll be probably uh, next week in the bulletin we'll be having the dates for our picnic our church picnic um, and uh, any other I, I don't think there's anything else maybe we'll do a, a friend day as well um, in or maybe we can combine I'm not sure but uh, we'll have a friend day again in September um, as well which is always a good opportunity to to invite people out so uh, be in prayer about those as well and uh, good to see again uh, God's blessing and some again lots of people in need of health uh, prayer and uh, other prayers so good to see God working and healing and and uh, praising the Lord for his goodness so at this time we will have the ushers come and uh, we'll take the morning offering. Kyle, would you pray, please? Dear God, thanks for that really all able to continue being here to make this event. May it please be here, you would be in peace. God, you would get some of the message that you have for us, and I pray that we bless the offering. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen.
so much for that ladies and uh, I, I uh, we go on vacation somewhere and uh, we don't know a pastor in that area I'll go on the uh, there's there's databases that they have for independent Baptist churches or whatever but even sometimes still you got to be careful I'll go on their website I'll always I'll li- uh, before we go there I'll listen to their music and if their music is good I mean appeals to the to the spirit not the flesh amen and uh, that I, I know it's going to be a good church because it's usually the first thing to go. They start bringing in this flesh-driven music, right? And so uh, you look for good music, and I thank God for good music, amen, that ministers to your soul. And uh, that was a blessing. I appreciate that. Let's uh, stand again. And uh, 333, Give Me Jesus. Give me Jesus, all his joys are but a name, but his love abideth ever through eternal years the same. Oh, the height and depth of mercy, oh, the length and breadth of love, oh, the fullness of redemption, pledge of endless life above. Take the world, but give me Jesus, sweetest comfort of my soul. With my Savior watching o'er me, I can sing the billows roll. Oh, the height and depths of mercy, oh, the length and breadth of love, oh, the fullness of redemption, pledge of endless life above on the fourth take the world but give me jesus in his cross my trust shall be till the clearer brighter vision face to face my lord i see oh the height and depth of mercy oh the length and breadth of love 
of redemption, pledge of endless life above. Amen. You may be seated. Take your Bibles and turn back into the Old Testament. Uh, we're going to look at 2 Kings chapter 6, 2 Kings chapter 6 and verse 1 to 7. And, uh, you know, I, I sometimes, I'll write a message and maybe, you know, you can relate to this when you're making something in the kitchen or out in the shop or whatever it may be. You know, but I, I'm preparing a message and, you know, there are sometimes I, I, I finish the message, I'm excited about it. And, uh, you know, I know it's all come together. Oh, God was in this and he gave me this message. And, and then you preach it and it's like, you know, you can hear the crickets in the background. And, you know, it's like it just didn't go. And then other times, you know, you're, I, I'll, I'll prepare a message and I'll think, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just not sure if I put all the ingredients in, you know, if I'm going to bake it long enough or whatever it may be, if it's going to. And uh, that's one of the messages. That's the message I've got for you this morning. I'm, it's like no recipe, just kind of throw some stuff in, I guess. And um, all that said, I hope I do justice to this because I believe, I believe that, uh, there is so much in this story about this little insignificant miracle. And uh, if I was to ask you this morning to uh, get a, p a pen and a piece of paper and write out all of the miracles that took place in the Old Testament, and Elijah and Elisha, uh, between the two of them, they did the majority of the uh, miracles in the Old Testament. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm sure uh, that this little miracle isn't one that's at the top of anybody's list, if it even makes anybody's list. But I do believe that there's an important lesson in this little miracle of the axe head floating. And, um, you know, each and every one of us, we've all experienced certain things in our Christian life some of us have been uh, Christians for many years, and some of, uh, some of us maybe uh, only uh, a short time, maybe only a decade or maybe two decades. Some of us maybe only months. Some of us maybe years. Uh, we've all experienced different things, but one of the things that we need to learn, no matter where you are, what you've been through in life, and, and as a Christian, we've got to realize that we can't do anything without the power of God. We can do nothing without the power of God. And this little story here is all about doing things for, the, for God with, with his power, with the power of God. And I remember many years ago hearing a message on this about the power of God, losing, losing the power of God in your life. And I was saved, I think at that time I was saved for about two years or three years. And uh, I, I, I did not understand that message. I didn't understand what the preacher was talking about because I had never lost the power of God. I was still, as, as you might say, uh, in my honeymoon uh, when it came to my salvation, I was still uh, excited. And, and you're saying, well, pastor, I'm still excited. I'm glad if you're still excited. You know, but sometimes we can lose the excitement. We can lose the power of God in our lives. And, and you see, that message didn't do anything for me because I had never, never been there. But then as the years went on and uh, there were times in my spiritual life where I maybe became complacent and I experienced losing the power of God and I thought back to that message that that preacher preached and I remember thinking, now I can relate. Now, now I know what he was talking about because I know that I didn't have the power of God in my life like I had had for those many years. And you know, I think over 25 years now of being saved, 26 years of being saved, I think of many times that I've lost God's power where I've become indifferent and I've lost his power. Now, I'm going to just give this little illustration, and I'm, I'm hoping I'll tie it in at the end, but, you know, a, a couple of years ago, well, I, I have a, I'm going to give you the long version 
of this story this morning. So fasten your seatbelts if you need to get a coffee. So I have a bow, I bow hunt, and, and, and one of my sons, and I won't mention Kyle's name, uh, you said, Pastor, that's getting old. That's okay, so funny. Yeah, he, he decided he wanted to shoot my bow, so we gra- I, I'm going, you know what? It, it, just, it, it usually isn't a good thing when somebody grabs my bow. And uh, my arrows are probably about uh, $25 a piece, maybe $30 with inflation and COVID and all, and probably maybe 50 bucks. Out of it. They're, anyways, so he grabbed my bow, and he shot at the target, and he missed it by like a, a country mile. And it went into the woods, and, and, and I, uh, that's okay. I'm not giving him a hard time because I've missed it myself many times. So I, I thought, you know, I, I, I'm going to get a metal detector because they bury themselves right into the ground. So I went and I got myself a metal detector because I wanted to get a metal detector anyways because uh, I know there's all kinds of goodies buried around. We found some uh, at our old farm. And uh, so I went out there with the metal detector after I bought it, and whoop, 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 there's, there's the arrow. I got the arrow back, amen? 25 bucks. And then um, I, I found a couple other arrows that I, 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 that I, when I missed the target, I knew they had been there for a couple years, but they were fine. I pulled them out, got them back. And, um, and then I was uh, just doing, watching some videos uh, of guys learning. It, there's kind of some techniques to metal detecting learning false alarms and learning different things and sounds of what might be gold or silver or whatever it may be. And, uh, and I was reading this article. It said one of the best places to, uh, to search for things is in old church yards. So I, I, I brought my metal detector here the other day, and I went around and started to see what I could find. Now, I didn't find anything of any value. I found a nail a cut-off lock. It was buried about six inches, just about 10 feet away from the shed. So you can kind of put the history of that together, right? It had been cut off and buried. And I found a whole bunch of wire. I found several things of wire. But uh, there's, there's these treasure hunters that go out, go down to the beach there, and they're all over the place, guys with metal detectors, people with metal detectors, and they're finding rings, diamond rings, uh, gold rings, silver rings, necklaces, jewelry, coins, and all kinds of things. You know, people, uh, th- this one guy, he was down at this one beach, and he was going along, and uh, he got a, a, a sound, a, a reading on his thing, and on his metal detector, and then he, he was kind of talking to somebody as he was doing this, and then he went down there, and he dug a little bit, and it was just there on the surface, and he pulled out this uh, probably about a $10,000 ring. So the moral of the story is you're going out on a picnic or somewhere, don't bring your $10,000 ring. But then and this lady came running into the scene and she's just screaming happy because she lost her ring and she saw this guy with the metal detector and asked her if, if he would come over and check this area and she got, she got her ring back. And uh, there, the, the, back to our, 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 our text here, Israel uh, had been going through a bit of a rough time. Israel, uh, they were a little bit like a roller coaster. If you've ever been on a roller coaster, they're up and down, amen? They, they're, they're up and down. One minute you're up, one minute you're down. Israel was like that. They would be on a spiritual high, and then they would uh, lose uh, their, their, their desire for God, and they would go after Baal, and they'd go after Molech, and they'd go after uh, false gods and set up their groves and their images and do all of that. Well, this happens to be a time in Elijah's life, or Elisha's life, sorry, and that's one thing I want to ask God, I probably won't, is why he had those two prophets named so closely. And... Uh, Elijah and Elisha, but Elisha was in one of those periods where, uh, where Israel was in a spiritual low. They had been worshiping Baal, and they were uh, in need of revival, and uh, things looked good, though, amen? There were prophets. Uh, there, were, there were preachers. You might want to say they were preacher boys. Uh, they were coming. They were learning. Elisha had a, a, a nice group of uh, students in his seminary that he was teaching. And uh, they were going to go out into Israel and become preachers. And, you know, I'm thank, I, I thank God for preachers of the Word of God. Amen. I'm thankful for um, uh, all of those that are preaching the gospel. But 
You know, we, we've got a problem, and I'm just going to say it has nothing to do with my message, but we, we've got a problem. You know, I, I know last time I was at a, a preacher's meeting, uh, and, and I've heard it, I don't know how many times in preacher's meetings over the last 10 years, that in Canada, the average age of independent fundamental Baptist pastors is over 55 years old. And, and uh, I remember one time hearing, I was 49, and I remember hearing at that time uh, there, that the majority was uh, 70-something percent was over 50, and I said, yeah, I'm not there yet, but I'm there. And, uh, you know, I, I think about, I believe, it, I believe it was Tennessee Temple at one time had 5,000 seminary students every year learning, and, and, and they were preacher boys, they were going to be preachers. And I, I believe that that... that that, t- that college is gone now. And, um, you know, we need, we need, we need preachers. We need, we need these prophets here. Uh, they were important for Israel. And if Israel was going to get back on the spiritual uh, plateau that they, or not plateau, summit that they needed to be on, they were going to need the preachers, amen. The Bible says, how are they going to hear without a preacher? And you know, yeah, we're all preachers, amen? We're all to go out and, and to preach the gospel onto every creature, uh, but, but we need the, the, the preachers of God, the pastors that are going to uh, raise up a flock and shepherd the flock and feed the flock and uh, grow the word of God and increase the word of God. And uh, things were looking up in Elijah's world, or Elisha's world, sorry. Everything was looking up. Uh, they had a problem, in fact, And you know, some problems are good problems. I said to one fellow before he sat down, you better sit down before or while the getting's good, while there's lots of seats to choose, amen? But that's a good problem in church when we're fighting for for pews. And I think I mentioned uh, Bible or parking spaces out there. We've got less parking spaces than we have chairs in here. But you know, it's a horrible problem in church when you haven't got enough chairs, Amen. And uh, we praise God for that. That's a good problem. Well, they had a problem, but it was a good problem. There were so many preachers that were coming. There were so many young men that were surrendering their lives to full-time Christian service and, and wanting to become preacher boys uh, or, or preachers. They, they, they started outgrowing their little, uh, their little seminary uh, that they had, this little, little house that they had. They were outgrowing it. In fact, it was getting so small that they had to go outside if they wanted to change their minds. It, it, was just, it was just getting too crowded. And that was a good problem. That was a good problem to have. God's power was needed. God's program was growing. God's power was needed. Let's read together uh, 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 1 to 7, the Bible says, And the sons of the prophets said unto Elisha, Behold now, the place where we dwell with thee is too straight. It's too straight for us. And that word straight there means it's, it's constricted, it's small. Uh, they're bumping into each other. Uh, you, you know, they're, they're fighting for room. And this is the idea here. And the Bible says, Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan, and take thence every man a beam, and let us make us a place there where we may dwell and he answered go ye and one said be content I pray thee go with thy servants and he answered I will go so he went with them and when they had when they came to Jordan they cut down wood but as one was felling a beam the axe head fell into the water and he cried and said alas master for it was borrowed And the man of God said, Where fell it? And he showed him the place, and he cut down the stick and cast it in thither, and the iron did swim. Therefore said he, Take it up to thee. And he put out his hand and took it. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the word of God. We thank you for this seemingly uh, insignificant little event in the life of Elisha and this, this young preacher. Uh, but Lord, there is much in it for each and every one of us, preacher or not. Uh, Lord, we, we can learn about the power of God here. And uh, I pray that the Holy Spirit would have his will and way and guide uh, what I say, give me the right things to say, 
And may the Spirit of God have his way. And again, I do pray if there's somebody without Christ here today that they might make that decision, that eternal decision uh, to trust him. And for the Christians, again, may we reclaim the power of God if we're in a place where we've lost it, where we know that we're not where we used to be, that we would, again, learn here to claim that power. So thank you, Lord. And may the Holy Spirit have his will and way again in Jesus' name. And amen. You know, when, I, when we, th we think about Israel's spiritual health, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of different ideas in our world today uh, about Christianity and, and these ideas of, of, of home churches where the father is the priest and all these other things. Well, we don't need church. We don't need to hear the preachers. Well, God has ordained uh, th that the preaching of the word of God, amen, is his program. Uh, God has ordained the local church. We're living in the church age. And uh, today God speaks to, through his, his preachers and, 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 and he speaks through the church. And this is the pillar and the foundation or the, fa the foundation of the truth. Amen. If you're going to find the truth, you're going to find it in a good Bible believing church. You're not going to find it on the internet. And, and by the way, be very careful about where you go on the internet, not only uh, for moral reasons, but even theological reasons, you can come out more confused than a termite and a yo-yo. Amen? I mean, there are all, there, there's all kinds of wingnuts out there. There's all kinds of wackos. And I always say there's you know, a nut bar in every candy store. And, and there's plenty of them online. that They sound good, and they, uh, they'll tell you all kinds of things. But um, again, we've got to be careful. Uh, but in Israel's day, I believe just like even in our day, as the church is important to our, our society, so too were the preachers of, uh, of God and the prophets of God. Without the prophets, like we looked at a verse last week, without a vision, the people perish. Without the, the, the preaching of the law, the, the, the people are going to perish. And who was doing the preaching of the law? It was the prophets. The prophets were the ones that needed to go and they needed to proclaim God's word. So how crucially important was it in, in a land that was filled with Baal worship? We think about our land today. We have a land that's certainly filled with, with pagan ways and even churches that are adopting them. And without the preachers, they, they are so vitally needed. Now, we might think as well when it comes to uh, an, an axe head. I mean, we, we live in a disposable world. We were talking about that the other day uh, with some folks about, uh, you know, back when we were kids, you know, things lasted forever, amen? My, my parents had a fridge that lasted right up into my adulthood, and I think they already had it for 10 years before I was born. If you have a fridge today for 10 years, you're doing well, amen? We had a toaster and, and, and it lasted forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And you can buy, even today, you can go buy, you could find appliances from the 50s that are work perfect. They're, they're, there's nothing wrong with them. Things were built to last. Now we just throw everything away. And so, you know, what would we do if we were, you know, I don't know what happened here. A lot of people just assume that the axe head came off of the, the, the handle or maybe the whole handle slipped out of his hands and right into the water it went. But, but he, his, the axe was gone. The axe head was gone. And uh, so what, what would we do? We'd go down to Canadian Tire or TSC, or sorry, PV Mart, and we'd buy another one. So back, guys will be back in five minutes. But you know, just like in our day, you know, preachers, especially students, Bible college students, if you've ever been one or known one, we know how much money they have, amen? They're all loaded with money. And, uh, you know, they, they, have, they have all the money in the world to go and buy another axe head. Well, you know, for the most part, this was an economic loss. This was an incredibly large economic loss to lose something like an axe head. This wasn't something that you just go down to the local hardware store and replace, but not only was it an economic loss, but it was a borrowed axe head as well, which made it an economic crisis. The first thing that I want us to look at here is the service of God, and that's what we find there in the first three verses. And the sons of the prophets said unto Elisha, 
Behold now, the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. Let us, we pray thee, uh, let us go, sorry, we pray thee unto Jordan, and take thence every man a beam, and let us make a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, Go ye. And one said, Be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And he said, I will go. So these um, young prophets came to Elijah, and they said, listen, we're, we're outgrowing our quarters. You know, we've got to build a bigger barracks here. We need something bigger. Uh, we've got people signing up for the seminary every week. And, uh, you know, we, we've just got to get something bigger. So let's get work. Let's get to work. Let's get busy serving God. And so, so Elijah said, uh, listen, this is a great idea. Go on out, get the wood, go work, get that thing done. And they said, well, Elijah... Uh, why don't you come with us? And he said, sure, I'll come with you. I'll go along um, and kind of show you the ropes and help you out. And uh, so uh, off they went. And uh, they began serving God. They began doing things for God. And, you know, when we think about this work, this, this, this work for God, maybe it wasn't what they thought they were signing up for. And sometimes we can think that, well, you know, uh, this isn't what I signed up for. I, I didn't want to be the janitor, or, or I didn't want to, you know, do this or, or usher or be. I, I wanted to. I wanted to be the preacher. I thought. I thought I, I could just move right in and be the preacher and preach all the time, or or do this or, or serve in this capacity or whatever it may be. But but whatever God calls you to do, do it. Amen. You know, I, I was uh, at at, at uh, our previous church. I was a I was a deacon for twelve years and. <clears throat> You know, I, I, uh, I knew I was called to be a preacher, but I, I believed that it would be a good way to serve God. Uh, uh, and so I, 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 was a, I, was a, I was a deacon, and boy, it was, it's a fun job. You know, what is a deacon? People sometimes ask that. Well, he was the guy that cleaned the toilets, amen? And, and uh, we had this old 100-year-old septic system that needed to be dug up all the time. It wasn't one that had, you know, the... The, 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 the top right at the ground level we had to dig down so Brian and I the other deacon we'd be out there whenever it backed up and we'd be digging it out we got the to the big big cement tops and we'd grab it we'd pull that out and I'd say Brian you stick your head down here see if there's anything wrong I said I'm senior deacon I was deacon for 38 seconds before you were nominated so down you go and uh, so and then there was two of these things and then you know it, it was just not a fun job. And we had to do that every couple of years. And, uh, you know, if, if whatever we're trying to do, taking care of the, the, the maintenance of the, of the building or whatever it was, you know, and I, I'm, how many times I was sitting here thinking, I, I just, I, I don't remember signing up for this. It, it, uh, but I'm serving God, amen? And whether it's cleaning toilets or whether it's pulling out the septic and pulling that top off and doing all of that fun stuff that we all like doing, it's serving God, Amen. And there's going to be a reward. I think there's going to be a special reward for, for deacons that clean out septic tanks. And, um, you know, they're out there. They were serving God. You know, our, our faith, when we think about our service, when God, when God calls us into higher places of service or, or maybe more responsibility. Uh, maybe God's given you more responsibility in the church or maybe uh, you're, 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 you're asked maybe to do things that you, you think, wow, you know, that, that's, whew, that's up there. And, you know, but our faith, according to our faith, amen, and, and the power that God gives us as, as we serve him and whatever we may do for him. But, you know, no matter what we do for him, we have to have the power of God cleaning, cleaning out the septic system or preaching or doing whatever. You need the power of God. You need to have faith and you need to simply believe. Uh, you need to go forward for God. And, and sometimes our faith can be small, just like their dwelling was small. Our faith can be constricted and it can be narrow and we won't see the greater picture for what God wants for us. A.W. Tozer said, God is looking for people through whom he can do the impossible. The impossible. He goes on to say, what a pity that we plan only things that we can do ourselves. And you know, serving God 
And doing great things for God isn't about our ability. It's not about, uh, you know, whether, whether we think we can do it. Because to us, it may be impossible. To us, it may be just something that we've never considered before. But if God maybe is calling you into, into doing some area of service that you never thought possible in your life, there are many things that uh, in, in my life I know that I could not do without the power of God when it comes to serving Him. There's absolutely, there were times in my life when I said there's absolutely no way that I'll do that. And I, I know, I, I think I've mentioned before, uh, my pastor asking me uh, to, to do some song leading. And uh, he asked me, and I said, no, I don't, I, I, you can get someone else. And then he asked me again, and I, I, I no, no. I, when, I, when I first got saved, I knew nothing about music. I don't know a whole lot any, you know, still, but I, I remember one time we were singing in choir, and, and, and Pastor Dave McQuiggan was beside me, and we're singing this song, and it was a song that we sing and all know, but I didn't know it too well, and then I'm, I'm just kind of winging it, and I started going up higher, and he gives me his big elbow, and he says, look, it says it's going down, and I said, the music notes are going down. He said, that means you go down, and I said, I oh, I didn't know that. I, or maybe I did, I just never put it together. But, uh, I mean, I couldn't hold a note if, if it had handles on it. it, it and um, to get up in front of everybody and do that, I'm going, come on. <clears throat> but, you know, uh, I knew I needed to. And I knew I should. Listen, if, if God wants me to serve in that, then I'll serve in that. If that's what God wants me to do. If that's where God wants me to be. It's not where I want to be. And believe me, it's going to take the power of God and it's going to take a miracle for me to get up there and do it. So I went up there and I'm glad we didn't have one of them glass modern pulpits. My knees were just a going like this. And so I come out, my knees are like that and, and uh, sweat, you know, and all that. And uh, he called me up and he said, would you, would you song lead? And I said, no. And I called him back five minutes later and I said, all right, I'll do it if you didn't get anybody else in that five minutes. And he said, no. And he, he, it was funny, I, if I remember right, he said, you know, I, just, I knew you were going to call me back. He said, I just knew you were going to call me back And after about 18 times of asking. And so what was the problem? Was it, my, was it my singing voice or was it my ability to try to, you know, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It was, or, you know, whatever. Yeah, we don't, anyways. No, it wasn't. The problem was my faith. The problem was my faith. And uh, believing God can use me and, and do things and help me and, and help me to move forward. And, and you know, I, when I went up there and did that for the first time, I really wasn't shaking that bad. But it was only the power of God that brought me up there. And it was the power of God, uh, you know, the first time I ever preached and the power of God the first time I ever ushered. I remember the first time I even stood up I used to hate being in front of people. The first time I stood up for a guy at a wedding, I literally came within uh, like that. I don't know. I, I was spinning and I was like, you know, I was one of those guys you see on YouTube that falls down and that was it. I mean, I didn't like being up in front of people. And uh, so, you know, God can do things in our lives that, with his power, with his power can make us do things. I know one pastor, uh, he, he uh, uh, you know the smell, the septic smell that every hospital has, it doesn't matter what hospital, they have that septic smell. Well, he would pass out. He, if he went into a hospital, he would let, that smell would just make him pass out. I know another, pa and after he got saved, and after he got called to the ministry, because he knew he'd be going to the hospital a lot, he said it didn't bother him anymore. I knew another pastor, he was killed in a, a car accident, and he became a missionary. And uh, he went uh, in, in Europe, uh, he, he was killed over there, went to be with the Lord. But uh, first time we ever met him, he came to our church and he presented his work at our missions conference. And he got up there and he preached, and he preached, and he preached, and he preached, and he preached a good message. Young guy at the time, I think he was only about 22 years old, and preached a great message 
And we said, well, brother, w would you guys, w we had them over for, f for night lunch that night after the Sunday night service. And so he come over, they arrived, hey, how you doing? And he sat down in our living room and we started talking and he, s he was stuttering. And I'm, I was like, uh, and, and he, he says, well, I, I, I don't want to make you feel uncomfortable, but I, I can tell your rea you, you your reaction to my stuttering, and he uh, and I said, well, it wasn't just that. It's just that you preached, you never stuttered once. And, it, and it, he says, well, I have Tourette's. And he says, uh, I, uh, I I stutter when I speak. And and God called me to preach. Could you imagine God calling me to preach? He said, I, I'm going to get up there and I'm going to stutter and, and stammer and and say words wrong and do. And, and, but he says, he says, God, I don't understand it. It's impossible. But I'm going to do it because I believe you called me. And I, in the power of God, I'm going to do that. And he says, I got up to preach for the first time. He said, I, I don't stutter when I preach. My, my son's father-in-law stutters. Yeah, he has a bad stuttering problem. But he can get up and he can sing without stuttering. Sometimes, if it gets, especially if he gets a little nervous, it takes sometimes... 30 seconds to get a word out, but he can get up there and he can sing because God has given him that ability to do that. And you know, is it, like I was saying, even with my song leading, is it, is it my voice or is it their voice or is it their stuttering? Or No, it, it's our faith that's the problem. Our faith to believe that God can do things in his power. We we may lack, just like these prophets, the material possessions, but we have spiritual possessions that are going to enable us through the power of God to do great and mighty works. You know, riches and poverty are, are, are in the heart. They're not in the hand. Riches and poverty are in the heart. They're not in the hand. He is wealthy who is contented. If you're simply contented while the discontented millionaire is going to be poor and going to be needy. And the Lord, Lord bestows upon his people the unpurchasable blessings of contentment and power and, and the abilities to do things when we don't feel like we have the material possessions to be able to do them. God is going to enable us. Henry or Patrick Henry said this, I have now disposed of all my uh, property to my family. There's only one more thing I wish that I could give them, and that is faith in Jesus Christ. If they had that, I, and, and I had not given them a single shilling, they would have been rich. And if they had not that, and I had given them all of the world, they would be poor indeed. You know, God enables all of us to be able to do more than we could ever believe possible. There was a, a strong man at a circus, and, and he had his strong man show where he would do all kinds of uh, uh, physical feats that nobody else could do. And at the end of his show, he would get a half slice of lemon, and he would put that between his hands like this, and he would squeeze it and squeeze it, and he would squeeze all of the lemon juice out. And at the end of the show, he said, I will give $5,000 to any man who can squeeze another drop of lemon out of this. And over the years... Yeah, he, you know, men would come and they would try, but nobody was ever able to get another drop uh, uh, of lemon uh, juice out of that lemon. And then one day after the end of a show, he uh, made the call to anybody that could get one more drop out. And this uh, older, thin, scholarly looking man came forward. Scrawny picked up the lemon and he squeezed it and he managed to get six more drops the strong man was stunned. He paid the man his money and he asked, what is the secret to your strength? Practice was the man's answer. answer. He said, I was a treasurer at a Baptist church for 30 years. <laughs> but spiritual power is not in the hand, it's in the heart. It's not what we have, but it's what God gives us and what God enables us to do. 
And God has God is asked all of us to serve him in one way or another. We're all to be servants of God. And as we serve God, we can only do it with the power of God. Number two, we find borrowed strength. And the Bible says in verse 4 and 5 there, So he went with them. And when they came to Jordan, they cut down wood, but one but as one was felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water. And he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And again, as I mentioned, this, this seems to be a, a, a fairly insignificant event because, you know, again, for us today, if, our, if an axe head fell off and fell into the, into the pond or into the river, we wouldn't think a whole lot. But this was a crisis in this man's life. There are two reasons why it was a crisis. And, and when we lose the power of God to serve, there are two reasons for us today why it is a crisis. Number one, it was the loss of productivity. The loss of productivity. The Bible tells us here that these men were busy working in the woods it was full of axemen, and if you were there, you would have looked around, and it would have been like a bee's nest of, of workers and everything getting done, uh, trees being felled, uh, uh, beams being cut, all kinds of things going on, but this individual was now taken out of the service of God, and in this position, he could do nothing for God. He was no longer serving God. He was no longer uh, giving his effort to, 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 to serve God in any capacity. And when we lose the power of God, we can't serve. We may be trying, we may try to serve in the flesh. But that will be in itself a disastrous thing. We, when we lose the power of God, we will no longer be effective for Christ's cause. There was an old, I believe, Scottish hymn writer by the name of William Cowper, and he wrote this song. It says, Dear Lord, accept a sinful heart which of itself complains and mourns with much and frequent smart, the evil, is con it, the evil it contains. Their fiery seeds of anger lurk, which often hurt my frame, and wait but for the tempter's work to fan them to a flame. Legality holds out a bribe to purchase life from thee, and discontent would fain prescribe how thou shalt deal with me. While unbelief withstands thy grace and puts thy mercy by, presumption with a brow of brass says, Give me or I die. How eager are my thoughts to roam. I quest of what they love. But ah, when duty calls them home, how heavenly they move. O oh, cleanse me in the Savior's blood. Transform me by thy power. And take me thy beloved to thy beloved abode and let me roam no more. And you know, uh, how easy is it for us to roam? How easy is it for us to leave the, the one we love? And no more will we be effective for God and no more will we serve God to that capacity. One of the preachers there at our camp this year, I, I would have rather had him tell the story, but I, I know for many years he was a pastor and then he, he just gave up on God. Prone to wander and prone to leave the Lord I love. And for many years he was gone until God got a hold of him and brought him back and serving God again. He had lost the power of God. He had lost his faith and God <clears throat> brought him back, and we'll see again at the conclusion here on how we can do that. But the second problem that this man had was not only was he taken out of the service of God, but it was a lent possession. <clears throat> and again, this isn't a common misfortune. It's not unusual to lose something that we've borrowed. But if you're like me, and I think you are, we're usually a little more concerned if it's not our own, if it's somebody else's. 
uh, you know, oh boy, I, I, this guy lent this to me, and he said, not a scratch, you know. Uh, you, you, um, I always told my kids, if you borrow something, if you borrow a car, you, a truck or whatever, you bring it back with more gas than it came with, amen? Uh, if, you, if you borrow something, it goes back in the same condition or even better than when you got it, just a good rule of thumb. Uh, you, you take care of other people's stuff. And um, this, uh, this individual was certainly distraught that he had lost somebody else's uh, possession. And again, this appeal here, you know, there, there, there's no direct request for help. We don't find him calling out but, or for help, but I think it's clear here at the undertones of his uh, complaint uh, certainly constituted an appeal for help. I, I've lost the axe head. You know, when we think about the various companies of the prophets, and as I mentioned, how critical and important they were for the worship of the, the true God, the importance of these prophetic schools was, was also underscored by Elisha's presence with them. Elisha was there. And he knew how critical it was in keeping alive the worship of God and keeping these individuals in the service of God, keeping them on the right track. And you know, all of us need to learn that what we have and our abilities to serve God and, and do things for God and be anything for God, all of those things are given to us by Him. In fact, we can say all things are given by God. And God gives us the power to serve, and when we lose that power, we lose God's power. There was a sign in a textile mill, a sign on the wall, and it said this, when your thread becomes tangled, and in big bold letters it said, call for the foreman. When your thread gets tangled, Call for the foreman. Well, this lady had been working there. She'd only been there for about a week and a half, and guess what? Her thread got tangled. So she thought, you know, I'm just new here. I don't want to borrow, bother the foreman. I'm going to try to get this tangle out myself. So she went at it herself. She only made a, uh, she had, as my dad used to say, he had a bird's nest of, of thread, fishing line. <laughs> and 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 she said, I guess I'm going to have to call the foreman. So she went, she got the foreman. And she said, I tried. I did the best I could. And uh, he said to her, no, ma'am. If you did the best you could, you would, have, you would have called me first. You know, when we've lost the power of God, we, we can try our best. We can try in our flesh and in all of our human ways to, to, to maybe get back in the game and get back in the service for God. But the best that we can do is fail. All that we have is God. The possession that we have is that of God's. And then number three here, we, we see first of all the service, the service of God and then we see the borrowed strength. And then finally, we see the recovered strength. And this is in 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 6 and 7. And the man of God said, where fell it? And he showed him the place, and he cut down a stick and cast it, cast it in thither. And the iron did swim. Therefore, he said, take it up to thee and put out his hand and took it. You know, we're, 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 and we should not be amazed at the simplicity of this miracle. It's, it's one of the most simple miracles in all of the Bible. And, uh, you know, we should not marvel or be amazed at how simple it is. It, it's not going to make the miracle hall of fame. You know, we think of some of the great miracles in the Bible of, of uh, the parting of the Red Sea or raising people from the dead or, or, or the, the, those old bones, uh, them bones that came to life at the mere touch of the prophet. We think about so many great miracles in the Bible. 
and yet this one wouldn't make the Hall of Fame. But is this really a trivial miracle? And how much do we really know about the powers that be? And how much do we really know about the inner workings of any miracle? There was a story told many years ago about uh, a, a man who was involved in, a, in, a, in an old-fashioned duel in London, England. British aristocrat Lord William Avonlea Aven, had survived and came out unscathed in such a duel. And he handed a guinea to the hackney coachman who had conveyed him to the spot and home again. Surprised at the size of the tip, the man protested, but Lord... I only took you a mile. Avonlea waved aside the objection. The guinea is not for, for, for taking me. It's for bringing me back. Avonlea knew that getting into a duel was the easy part. That was the easy part. Surviving the ordeal was another story. Losing something of value and Finding it again is sort of like that. Losing that valued item, that's the easy part. Losing something is easy. But getting it back, recovering it, is something else altogether. And you know, the axe head here represents the power of God in the soul to serve and to be useful for God lying there at the bottom of the river. No metal detectors, or no way to, to find it. And the old prophet simply goes and cuts down a stick and throws the stick in, and you know that stick represents the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said, if ye abide in me. Jesus said, I am the vine and ye are the branches. You know the branch can do nothing without the vine. The vine is what brings the nutrition to the branch. And uh, some people suggest that, you know, when that stick went in there, uh, that axe had floated up and joined in with that stick, and that's like our service for God. Without the power of God, without that fellowship and abiding in Christ, we can't do anything for Him. But you know, losing something is easy. Getting it back is the hard part. You know, I mentioned that lady that lost that ring. You know, to her, finding that ring was an impossibility. She thought it was gone. There's no way that I'm going to find that ring in all of this sand. But someone came along who had the ability to find it. You know, the prophet did something very simple. He just went to the man and he said, where fell it? Where did you lose it? See, if you want to get the power of God back, you've got to go back to the place that you lost it. You can go back in your minds and think, you know, I, I know things were going good here and I know I was on fire for the Lord there and I know I had the power of God here and there's that one thing maybe that took place or uh, something the pastor said got me upset and that was it, it was all over or, or this happened or that happened in my life or, or, or uh, I, I allowed this and I know from that point on that's when it happened, that's where I lost it that's when it became difficult and so we need to go back to the place and I, I, I like what the prophet said, when that iron swam, it came to the surface. He said, take it up to thee. Take it up to thee. And the Bible says he put out his hand and he took it. You know, if you can say, I know when I lost the power of God. I know, I know when, you know, I, I wasn't, quite anymore what I used to be for the service of God. I know when it happened. God says simply go over to that place, put out your hand, and take it. You can get the power of God back. 
You can get on fire for God again. You can get to the place of, of faithfulness and you can get to the place of, of joy and service for God simply by just going and getting it. Take it back. There's no secret. There's no magic. It's there. And you can go back and get it. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be here today. And Lord, as we think of this miracle, and Lord, that power of God is a miracle. And it will only be by the power of God that if, if we're here today and we can say uh, I, uh, with honesty, I've lost the power of God. I, I know that I'm not serving God in, in, in his power. I know I'm not where I used to be, whatever it may be. It's going to take God to give it back, but we can simply take our hand, put it out, and take it. It's there if we want it. And if you're here today and you're without Jesus Christ, you've never trusted him as your Savior. I, I pray that today you, it's simple, just as simple as that as well, just simply receiving it, taking it. God is offering it to you. There's no magic trick. There's no test. There's no entry level of IQ. There's nothing. It's simple faith. Put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Believe he died for your sins. Make him your savior. And uh, he will save you. And again, with everyone's head bowed and eyes are closed, nobody looking around, would you be here and say, Pastor, I know I've made that decision. I've trusted Christ. Thank you. Thank you for those hands. I know I've trusted Christ as my Savior. Would you be here? And again, nobody's going to center you out or call you out. But I want to pray for you. Would you be here and say, Pastor, I know that I'm not saved, that I'm concerned. Would you pray for me? I, I've never trusted Christ. I've never been born again. Would you pray for me? Listen, don't leave here without making that decision. But I want to pray for you. Don't let the devil win. You say, Pastor, pray for me. I need prayer. Would you be here as a Christian then and say, Pastor, I know that I've lost the power of God. I know that I've lost that axe head and I need to recover it, you would say, Pastor, would you pray for me? Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Say, Pastor, pray for me. I know I'm just not serving God in the power of his might. Anyone else? Amen. Thank you. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, and so often and how easy it is to lose what we have and lose that power because we become indifferent to sin because we become indifferent to service or even that fellowship to God and for those that were able to raise the hand today I ask God that you would give them that measure of power and as we have this altar call if they need to respond come to this old fashioned altar and get things right maybe come and put out their hand and take back that power I pray the Holy Spirit would have his will and way. We'll thank you, we'll praise you in Christ's name. And amen. Let's stand as we sing. Number 300. I surrender all. All to Jesus I surrender to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily.
Jesus, I surrender. Humbly at his feet I bow. Worldly pleasures all forsaken. Take me, Jesus, take me now. I surrender. fourth all to Jesus I surrender Lord I give myself to thee fill me with thy love and power let thy blessing fall on me Can I get you to close in prayer, please? Amen. And we're dismissed. Mm -hmm.